morning. It's Friday, November the 14th, and today it's 5.15 in the morning and must be squat day. Uh, for those of you who've kind of not seen many videos, it's because there hasn't been many videos lately. Um, I've had, uh, well, I guess this is before the workout, so let's let's talk about what's going on. I Last week was the world championships. I was an alternate on it. Did not get to go because uh, no one dropped off of it before the deadline. So um, in, I trained up till uh, second week of October for it. Um, and at that point the deadline cut off and then um, I started working on health issues I've been having. Been talking about health issues and prognosis. Basically what's going on is my right hip um, has pretty much, it's got a bunch of issues on it. It's got bone spurs. Um, it's got, um, that could be surgically operated on, scoped out, cleaned out, along with some other bone issues where my outside of my hips running into my labrum, which is labrum is like your socket of your hip. Um, both of those could be cleaned up. The issue right now is I've got pretty darn good arthritis in that hip and both hips actually, but in that hip it's, it's it worse. It's on both sides of the hip ball joint. And the prognosis from the doctors is cleaning out, doing the scope, which would be about three months to recover from, would only give me about a 60%, 65% chance of uh, improvement. So uh, the other prognosis, and that's multiple surgeons. I went outside the area from where I live to people who do it all the time. So uh, that was not real uh, encouraging been talking around other guys. The other option given to me, the next option beyond that that would fix it would be hip replacement. I am 39 years old. Uh, doctors are not real excited about doing a hip replacement on someone who's 39, being um, I'm probably going to go back to lifting, being they're going to have to do a second hip procedure in my 60s uh, and the prognosis of that. I'm still weighing out my options, but what I've done since then, I, I said, okay, let's, I was at that time dealing with daily pain, nightly pain, 24 hour pain. I was, I was, I was not able to sleep full nights because I couldn't lay on either side of my body, on either hip. Um, so I stopped squatting around four weeks ago. I haven't even looked at the math. I think it's about a full four weeks off squatting. Um, I have done a lot of different stuff, but I've done very, very little hip bend at all in workouts, trying to kind of calm things down with the arthritis, give my body a little bit of time to re recover. Uh, so the plan now is I'm gonna start today to squat again but I'm gonna try different approaches, different stances, different positions, mix it up, uh, change different volume schemes, and see how aggravated it gets, how, how extreme it is, uh, and how bad it gets quickly. Um, so, trying a bunch of different things, um, some of which might be complete disasters, trying different supplementations, different uh, medications, on the last two, three days. I don't want to be on medication seven days a week. So uh, I have try, I'm trying a plan with some Aleve leading up, ramping up to the leg workout and then ramping down after the workout. So then I only have to take it three days a week or so and do other, uh, uh, other things to help alleviate or work on the pain. Uh, but some of the, those supplements take a little while to build up in the system so you won't know right away. So here we go, lots of legs, um, some of which I might, I gotta, you know, depends. Like guys, right now I'm having problems even getting close to parallel in a normal position. Uh, if I get near parallel today with relatively low pain, that would be a huge success. Uh, um, prior to the stopping the workout, it would take me about 600 pounds, five or 600 pounds to 
to be the weight level to get me down low enough. Uh, and even then, it was a very weird positioning, bad posture. So I'm working on, uh, I'll be moving my stance in for this beginning of this training and working on the rep schemes and doing higher volumes and do some accessories that would help me in other areas. Uh, I'll talk more about why I think I got the bone issues uh, at a later time, uh, but I do think I have imbalances in my body and uh, I've been working on those non-stops. Uh, pretty much I started working on the imbalances since May, but really kicked it up in the last two months. I'll talk more about that in a later video. All right, here we go. Today's workout. It's a little cold out. Actually, started my car this morning. I started it uh, a few minutes ago, so it's probably nice and warm now. Got some frost on the window, and I had to scrape pretty good this morning. Probably woke up my wife. <laughs> um, well, that couldn't have gone much better than I thought. Uh, the test here, guys, is. I could usually get through some of the workouts for the most part, except for when things got really aggravated without too much pain. The mobile, uh, the range of motion was pretty good. Um, you know, some folks have been criticizing the bottom of my squat on the YouTubes uh, for having a butt wink. Frankly, I had to go look that up. <laughs> I've heard people say it over and over in the West Side and the butt wink and the blah, blah, blah. 
I think I've always done it. So if you guys are ultra freaked out by people talking about having butt wink, which is essentially a, a, a dropping of the hips at the bottom of your squat. Um, yeah, I've I been around and a lot of the lifters I've seen with similar styles have it. So I, I don't know what to say about it. I don't know. Maybe I need to educate myself some more, but I've been doing it for 24 years and uh, for the first 24 or 23 years, I haven't worried about it. Anyway, all right, so what really I got to monitor now, pain threshold. Um, I'm going to take some leave this evening. I took a leave this morning and I took it the last couple days and then I plan what I want to do is only be on the leave two, three days a week uh, for the leg workout and then cut off of it. So uh, the test will be whether I feel awful on Saturday and Sunday of this week. So uh, I guess that'll be the true indicator. But as far as how the workout went, I was pretty happy with it. Um, my range was pretty good. Um, I figured I could, if I could squat it without a belt comfortably for a set of eight, I was staying within range and not going too too heavy. Um, I only worked up to 315, but then I did a bunch of accessories. Um, I just didn't want to push it too hard, being it's uh, been aggravated and I'm just coming back. and. I want to just add a bunch, a load of volume between now and the end of the year. Um, hoping that I could squat. Hoping that I can maintain leg strength with squatting. Now, what I was talking about, we could talk about it in a little more detail now. Um, I believe part of my issue with my hip is I am a quad dominant lifter quad squatter and even when you're doing squats you usually release your hammies release your glutes to get the depth and I've done it for years and years and years and years and and my imbalance in my hip joint is caused I believe and this is a diagnosis a self-diagnosis is caused by lack of a glute ham strength or, or a more dominant um more dominant quad region so strategy here is regardless of whether I need to get a hip scope a hip replacement whatever to fix my issue to fix the issue that caused the imbalance I'm just gonna make it a mission to always do glute and ham activities and today was was the glute ham raise which um, I'm not sure if you notice I'm getting a little bit better at that um, my plan, I want to be able to do, right now I've been using the green band, um, thanks to the guys at Barbell Shrugged, uh, podcast vlogs, they gave me the, the way to do the band over, and then you adjust the band based on how much tension you need to do the glute ham raise. Um, I was shocked when I started glute ham raises back in April and May that I couldn't do a glute ham raise without mobile, without the band. But the band has actually helped. And when I don't do glute ham raises, the strength goes away. It, it just goes. It disappears. It's, it's gone in space. So um, when I, right now I'm starting to put the band behind my back for, for the workout, which means I'm getting stronger in the glute ham raise. Um, my goal would be by in 2015, I'd be doing glute ham raise sets with no, no band. Um, and just and then by the end of 2015 beginning of 2016 be able to do glute ham raises with weights and then that would work on the imbalance that's created in my hip joint and no matter what I have to do as far as recovery on my hip surgery whatever I think I need to fix that imbalance to prolong the prolong my legs prolong my hips and even it caused some back issues. Some of the rib pop I had back in, back in early in the year, um, what was that? April, May, was caused by that imbalance. I'm I'm doing weird things to deal with uh, the imbalance in my legs. So uh, that's it for today. Hope you guys had a good week. Hopefully this is a helpful vlog. If you like it, 
share it, thumbs it up. You guys have a good weekend. Take care.